Right, well, glad to have everyone out, and we know that there's some folks inside eating. Uh, some folks obviously will be coming over the course of the day, and and uh, we're really looking forward to it. And welcome just to our annual uh, chicken and biscuit, bluegrass, southern gospel, gospel sing, because we have a variety of music uh, uh, on tap for today. All of our proceeds for the chicken and biscuit uh, dinner is going to Operation Christmas Child. And most of you are probably familiar with Samaritan's Purse and Operation Christmas Child and the shoe boxes. But just to give you a little insight as to what that is, uh, Franklin Graham, the son of Billy Graham, he is, I guess, the founder and the president of Samaritan's Purse and the one who started Operation Christmas Child in the shoe boxes. And basically what you do is you pack a shoe box and you pack a shoe box for children. Uh, uh, just with, with a variety of ages, and you put in things appropriate for a child that age. If you're doing a three-year-old girl, you put in three-year-old girl items. One of the things that really hit home with me, and I'll talk about it a little bit more later on as we have other singers come and introducing other people, but one of the things that really hit home with me uh, this past year is we went down to uh, outside of Kaiser to Fountain of United Brethren Church and we had a speaker uh, come in and she was a recipient of a shoebox. And as a recipient of a shoebox, I don't really recall what country she was from, but she lived in an orphanage. And when she received her shoebox, she was excited about two things that was in the shoebox. She was excited about the entire shoebox she really spoke about two items. One was a coloring book, that she could have a coloring book in her own crayons, and she could color and, and fill up this coloring book. Now, she said when they ran out of the coloring book, they still had crayons, and they used the wall of the orphanage. And after that, they lost their crayons. But then the other part that really hit home for me was the fact of the simple thing of a toothbrush. A toothbrush. We all take this toothbrush for granted, if you have teeth especially. You take this toothbrush for granted. But she was telling me of an orphanage of 20 kids. All 20 used the same toothbrush. Now, how many here would want to use someone else's toothbrush after they've used it? I don't even use my wife's toothbrush. You know, we don't even use our spouse's toothbrush, let alone 20 kids using a toothbrush. Something as simple as a wash rag or, or a bar of soap or a, for a little girl, for a little baby doll, things that they don't have. And we'll talk more about this uh, later on uh, today. But uh, the, whole, the whole purpose of today in our, uh, is to support and sponsor uh, Operation Christmas Child and the Shoebox Ministry. And you can do that in a variety of ways. You can do that by packing your own shoebox. And if your church uh, sponsors that or supports that, maybe your church is a location that they collect shoeboxes, then that's wonderful. If you do not have a, if you do, uh, pack a shoebox and don't have a place to uh, bring your shoebox, uh, Asher Blade Church, we are a drop off location and you can bring your shoebox here and we'll take care of the shoebox for you. Uh, a shoebox uh, costs, I think it's $9 to send a shoebox of these items to whatever country it is that uh, the shoebox is going to. And sometimes you say, well, that's a lot of money to ship a shoebox uh, full of toys and full of uh, things for children. But when you put that in perspective, uh, if you take that same size box, and if you are right here in Friendsville, and you just wanted to ship that box to somebody who lives down the street from you, it costs you $12. If you wanted to ship it across country, it's going to cost you probably somewhere in the neighborhood of $17 or $18. If you want to take that same shoe box and ship it to Mexico, you're looking at $30 or $40 to ship the same shoe box someplace else. So it only costs $9. Uh, to ship a shoebox, but that still is an expense. So what we have in the back, in the back corner, is we have a little display table it has information about Operation Christmas Child, 
that has a sample shoe box back there and some other information that you can go back and inquire and ask about the shoe box and how it works. There's also a donation box if you would just like to donate to Operation Christmas Child. If you end up writing out a check, it's simple, it's simple just to make it out to Asher Glade Church of the Brethren and we can take care of it and it all 100% of everything goes to Operation Christmas Child. That's one of our main major ministries of our church is to support that. Uh, when, we t when we talk about children from age birth up to their mid-teens, how important it is for these people, these children, to get the message and the gospel of Jesus Christ because every single shoebox, every single shoebox that is packed has the message of Jesus Christ in it. And every single shoebox packed has a curriculum that children can follow to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. The girl who spoke to us at Fountain uh, United Brethren Church was a recipient of such a shoebox. And she has since been adopted into the United States by a family. But what an impact the contents of those shoeboxes have. So that's our purpose. We encourage you to uh, ask questions. We encourage you to pack a shoebox. We encourage you to donate to that ministry. And uh, we are excited about this year and what uh, God is going to do with Operation Christmas Child and the lives that's going to be touched. We started, I think, three years ago as a part of this uh, day of activities. We decided we need to bring in uh, gospel singers to, uh, to just uh, have some entertainment, but to also bring God's word and his message to you guys as you sit out here and and take part of your chicken and biscuits. And for the last couple of years, we've been bringing in uh, wagons. And we decided a couple of years ago, as we started doing that, that we needed to build a stage. So the stage is a work in progress. We do have it obviously up with a roof over top. We have size to put on, electric to run. Uh, one of the challenges, and it's really not a challenge that we had because it's not, uh, but Steve Smith, who's going to be our first singer, Steve, Steve said that he would provide all the sound equipment for us for this activity. And so we're very, very blessed, very thankful to Steve uh, and Katie, his wife, for, uh, for allowing us to use his equipment. Uh, Steve's going to sing first today because Steve, has to, Steve and Katie have to leave here and head for Kingwood, where he is donating his time to us tonight today, but he has a, he has a uh, singing engagement, I guess the best way, way of saying it, in Kingwood tonight, and that's what he needs to get to, but he, he is donating his time, he's donating his equipment, and we're so very, very thankful for Steve for that. So without any further ado, let's give a warm round of applause and a welcome to Steve Smith. Mike, you know what they say about that toothbrush, right? What's that? They said if you, it would have been a toothbrush if it were invented in West Virginia. But uh, if it had been invented anywhere else, then it's a teeth brush. It's a toothbrush. <laughs> yeah. All right. I got you. I can say that because I have a West Virginia hat on. That's where I'm from. So if I can I can say that. I think you can get by with it. So, uh, all right. I'm going to do a little bit of things maybe just a little bit different uh, than what I did. There we go. What I did last year. So, um... All of you know this song as well as I do. <clears throat> I'm going to sing it right out of the hymn. We're going to do some hymns to start with today. So uh, I'd like to say that at first that I'm honored to be able to be here and uh, to be able to do this with y'all. And one thing that Mike and I have talked about in the past and actually a couple weeks ago when we saw each other is uh, some way for me to be able to start doing more gospel music. So what I'm going to do today is, is I'm going to take you down a little trip of a uh, sort of a semi-trip of what it's like to be a, uh, a boy that grew up in the middle of nowhere that never that had very limited resources as someone to teach him how to play music and I'll take you through some of the things that I've accomplished I'm not bragging but uh, some of the things I've accomplished in my life but one of my favorite songs to sing in church uh, where I grew up was this one here and I want you all to sing along with me all right amazing grace how sweet the sound that 
Virginia. I, I did. The actual place I grew up was called Elena, West Virginia. Now things change as we get older and they start doing away with stuff. So we never, we lived at the same house, but our post office went from Elena to New York to Newton. So we lived in three places and never moved. So uh, anyway, we done that. And um, as a young kid, about 12 years old, I started showing an interest in, uh, in music and, uh, and also showed a great interest in church and the good Lord. And 12 years old is when I gave my heart to the Lord. And uh, a lot of a lot of shows and things that you see and a lot of country music singers you see on TV, they'll, they'll always say, and I, and I have to thank God for this or whatever. But, um, you know, they could be serious or could be not. But I honestly thank God for the talents that he's given me, uh, being able to sing, being able to play the guitar, being able to write songs, and being able to play a banjo. So it's one of the, one of the callings that... I guess you could say that I had as a as a very young man. One was to preach where I pastored two Baptist churches uh, where I grew up. And in later years, life hit and uh, went to work and all that kind of faded away. So it's one of the things that I'm still yet trying to hold true to today is sing, sing and hold up to that singing obligation. So uh, I'd like to take you on a little bit of a walk and a songwriter's journey um, of where I've been and where I came from. So this next song... Is a song that is near and dear to my heart. It's on the first CD that I ever cut in Nashville almost 10 years ago. And it's a song called Everything. A lot of people will think a lot of the songs that Steve Smith does is all like love songs. They are love songs. They're love songs about my relationship with the good Lord. It's not about who you're with. It's about my walk with God. And a lot of people confuse that. And I'm going to share a lot of those songs with you today. So uh, it's my personal walk with God. And and how I feel. So this song here called Everything I'd like to share with you. I say on my first CD. When it seems the world is closing in And you can't find you one true friend When your rope is at its end Just listen Set your feet here on some ground. I'll turn your whole life around. I'll be your first breath in the morning. I'll be the first beat of your heart. I'll be the glimmer of sun that comes and breaks the dawn. There's something good about today Just let me lead the way I'll feel your every need I'll be your everything I'll be your first breath in the morning I'll be the first beat of your heart I'll be the glimmer of 
sun that comes and breaks the dawn. I'll be your constant reminder. There's something good about today. Just let me lead the way. I'll feel your every need. I'll be your everything. Just let me lead the way. I'll feel your every need. I'll be your everything. So that's just like say one of the one of the songs that uh, I've ran across in my in my walk. Now uh, starting off, probably one of the very first songs that I learned to play in church, and one of the songs that I sang in church. I, I don't know about Asher Glade, but the little church that I grew up in, you can go down there today. They're still yet singing "Amazing Grace." This world's not my home. Just over in the glory land, they're singing all those. And those songs will always be a part of me and a part of who I am. And um, I, I love, absolutely love the old hymns. And uh, this next one, if you all know the words, please sing along with me. This is one of my favorites when I've learned how to play the guitar in church. This is one of the first songs that, one of the few of the first that I learned how to play. So uh, this world is not my home. This world is not my home. I'm just passing through. beyond the blue the angels beckon me from heaven's open door and I can't feel at home in this world anymore oh Lord you know I have no friend like you and if hell is not my home then Lord what will I share with you. Have y'all ever heard, I'm going to ask you first, <coughs> have you ever heard of a song called I'll Be a Friend to Jesus? Have you ever heard that? I never heard it before in my life <coughs> until there was an old man by the name of Willard Matheny. He used to work for the State Road. 
and then retired and was a member of our church and was actually a deacon of our church. And I'll never forget the first time that I heard, I'll be a friend of Jesus. He got up in front of the church. He sang it with absolutely no music whatsoever. I don't know that I, that I can even play the music that goes along with it. And I'm going to kind of give you a, a dose of what I had when I was a kid with this particular song. It's, uh, to me, it's one of the most beautiful written gospel songs that I, that I think that's out there. And um, the statement that this song makes is just absolutely amazing. And we go through this life and friends come and friends go. <clears throat> In my lifetime, friends have came and friends have went. And um, one thing I've learned through everything that I've been through in my life, the 48 years that I've been alive, is that at my weakest, at my strongest, at my happiest, and at my saddest, I've always had a friend that's there with me. And um, I hope I do this song justice. I hope this song says something to you all. If the wind turns the page, I apologize. I'll have to stop and go back. I think it's going to do a pretty good job of it. So let me try this right here. We'll hope that sticks. They tried my Lord and Master With no one to defend Within the halls of power He stood without a I'll be a friend to Jesus, my life for Him I'll spend. I'll be a friend to Jesus until my years shall end. The world may turn against Him, I'll love Him to the end. And while on earth I'm living, my Lord shall have a friend. I'll be a friend to Jesus, my life for Him I'll spend. I'll be a friend to Jesus until my years shall end. To all who need a Savior, my friend, I'll recommend. Because He brought salvation is why I am His friend. I'll be a friend to Jesus, my life for Him I'll spend. I'll be a friend to Jesus until my years shall be. Until my years shall be. So, uh, very moving song for me uh, to be able to, to have that. And, uh, so anyway, I'm going to kind of get on with it, and I'm going to start taking you guys through, uh, through some songs that, that I wrote, and uh, some things funny, some things sad, but I would like to say and testify before you all here today, and like you to know that I am a born-again Christian, and I want you to know that I am not perfect in any way, shape, or form, and I have failed many, many times in my walk and during my walk, and I'm thankful for forgiveness. And uh, that one thing that we that we do have and that we can count on, and I'm thankful that I do have a friend that I can call Jesus. Amen. And um, you know, it's uh, like I say, it's been a lot of ups and downs, and I've been through a lot of stuff. And I know through a lot of your all's prayers a couple years ago is one of the reasons that I'm sitting here today. So, uh, you know, thank you very much for your prayers. I appreciate it, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Now, this next song I'm going to tell you is sort of a funny little song, and it's a goofy little song. So. Uh, so all those songs that I sang in church and later on whenever I got older and turned 18, I went to Liberty University for two years, studied, uh, went and got my associate's degree in, in religion. And um, so when I was 20, I turned around and uh, didn't have a church to go to, uh, to preach in. 
So real life set in, and uh, that's where I began to pipeline, and pipeline turned to one thing, and then the next, and I was gone, and uh, it ended up taking me out of church for a long, long time. And uh, it's kind of sad, but um, that's the truth, and that's one of those times that I failed. So one of the songs that I wrote earlier in my country music career is uh, sort of a funny song, but all through that time, I still yet knew that I had to have somebody and someone in my life somewhere. And, um, you know, I know, the, I know the good Lord will guide and lead your paths and put you on the, on the right way and all that. So uh, Katie and I, whenever we met, uh, she had been through a lot and I had been through a lot. And uh, whenever I met her, I knew there was just something special about her that was uh, more special than anybody I'd ever met in my life. So uh, let me get tuned up here. Hey, bless your heart. Thank you. You've seen that thing. You've known that old trick. That's yeah. a good one. So anyway, I was um, on our date nights. Katie and I, we would be at home, and on Wednesday nights, uh, her kids went to their dads, and Wednesday night was date night. So uh, every Wednesday, I would drive from U or from Uniontown to the lake, and me and Katie would go on a date. And uh, for the very first time that I met her, there we go. For the very first time I met her. I knew that there was something about that girl that I could not get over. And it um, wasn't too awful long after that I asked her to marry me. But anyway, that night coming back home, I just hopped over the summer, falling back into Union Town, and I saw a shooting stars shoot across the sky. And I wrote this song about my sweetheart and my wife sitting over there. And I know it's, this is a country song, and it is about my wife, and I'd like to share it with you. It's just a good love song, and I think you guys would enjoy it. It's called About You. They fall from the sky I heard a thousand love songs With all the reasons why Fairy tales and wishes Things people dream of I've always heard about this Crazy thing called love But it was so far from my reach Yeah. 
I, that I wrote about her. And uh, Anyway, I, I feel that, I know scripture says too that if, uh, whenever we don't know what to do in our lives, the Bible tells us to stand still and let God move. And I remember, it wasn't too awful long before I wrote that song. I remember driving myself home from work from Uniontown, going back to Hopwood. And I had to pull over at the Walnut Hill exit because of the tears that was in my eyes because I just, I needed someone in my life. I felt that I needed someone. And I said, God, I don't know who it is. I don't have no idea where they're at. I said, you do. I have felt miserably when it comes to that. And uh, I said, I've always done, the, done what Steve Smith wanted to do. And I chose who Steve Smith thought he should choose until I prayed a prayer and I said, God, you send me who you want me to be with. I'd actually wrote myself little prayers down throughout the years uh, in my life. And I asked God, you know who it is. Please send them my way. And I thank God for that lady that's sitting right over there for her. Because she is truly an answer prayer. So, uh, and that's, that's why I wrote that song about that. Now, some of the songs that I'm going to share with you, you might think, well, hey, you know what? They're country songs. But you know what? They're true songs. And they're true songs about life. And I also believe that during our walk that we have with our Christianity and our walk that we have with Christ, I believe this with all of my heart. I believe that there were times whenever Christ was with the 12 disciples and they was out just walking around somewhere. I know there were godly things that needed to be talked about and things that needed to be discussed. And there were times when Jesus performed a miracle and done all these different things. But I also believe that there was a little humor along the way. That he was just as human as what you and I are sitting here today. And I also believe that they laughed at a few things along the way. So one of the things I'd like to be able to do is share another song with you. And I hope I can get a laugh out of you. Before I met Katie, I was homesick from work a few years prior to that. And again, still yet looking for someone. New guy, new town, new job, new everything. And uh, I... I felt that, you know, being single, being divorced for six, almost seven years, it was time for someone to be in Steve Smith's life. So even though I'm an entertainer and I sing and I write songs and I go everywhere and I do all this stuff, believe it or not, I'm shy. I truly am. I really am kind of shy. So one of the, one of the things that I've done, I hate to admit this, I put my profile online on eHarmony.com. And I thought I would find my soulmate because they told me on eHarmony.com I could find my soulmate down there. So I filled out a profile, got all that stuff in shape, and at the end of the questionnaire it asked me, said, how far are you willing to travel to meet your soulmate? 50 miles, I'm like, well, that's okay. You know, 100 miles, I'm like, well, gee, that's kind of pushing it, but I clicked yes on that one. And then it asked me 250 miles if I was willing to travel that far, and I thought, not really, but okay. I just clicked the picture and, you know, I thought, well, you know, I, you know, surely I have a match out there somewhere. And then it asked me another one, 500 miles, then 1,500 miles, then 2,500 miles, and then the continental U.S., in which I'd click yes on each and every one of those. I just wanted to get to the end to find out who my matches was going to be. I'm not going to lie about it. That's what I wanted. And so finally there was one more question that came up and it said, are you willing to look worldwide for your match? And I thought, why not? I've done clicked the entire continental U.S. What's worldwide going on earth? So I went ahead and I clicked the worldwide button and about that time my little pointer became an hourglass. And that hourglass began to spin. And it was spinning and then at the end of it it would say searching dot dot dot. And then it would go a little bit farther and then it would say searching dot dot dot. And it just kept doing this. And searching. Search, search, and finally, what seemed like forever, it finally came up on my computer screen and it said this. It said, we're sorry, but you have no matches at this time. And I thought, my goodness, there has to be a country song in this thing somewhere. So in my desperation to find someone online, eHarmony did not work for me. And I ended up writing a funny little song about it. So I hope you guys enjoy this. A song called Wishing Well. Search high and I've searched low Where love is I don't know I've looked all over this world Don't know where to find you girl I 
Wish I could find a wishing well Or learn the words to a magic spell Find the path that leads to you So when I find you Make all your dreams come true This old heart's ready for love Now that all the pieces are picked up It has its wounds and its scars Don't know where to make my start Make all your dreams come true <laughs> so, Yeah, that was, uh, that was a song I wrote about an eHarmony.com experience gone bad So uh, hopefully a little bit of humor for y'all Let me see what I'm going to do here Katie tells me I have like 10 minutes left And I have a whole lot more on here I guess I got a little windy, so uh, I'm going to back up. I'd like to share another song with you that uh, that I wrote. Actually, uh, my and Katie's uh, marriage almost hinged on this next song. Uh, I found somebody that I met, and um, anyway, we this we went round and round and round with this song for almost two years before we refined it and we got it right. So uh, we, anyway, we were in Avery Mills Pond, Virginia. We were doing a, uh, a video shoot for a song that that I'd previously put out and we felt that we needed to follow up with a video. And we were actually working with some wounded warriors uh, on the scene, so to say, on the, on the set. And uh, after about two to three days shooting into the scene, early one morning I had got up and the sun was coming up over Avery Mills Pond, Virginia. Beautiful sunrise. And I was thinking, you know, there are a lot of men and women who have given their life for our country. And I uh, also believe the Bible tells us that we need to honor the country that we live in. And uh, with that scripture being in mind, uh, you know, I thought it's a great thing to be able to live here in the good old USA. We have the freedoms where we can have gatherings like this and no one's going to drive by and do anything to us. That is our freedom. That is our liberty. That's what men and women have fought for. That's what they defended. That's what this country was founded on, was religious freedom. So with all those thoughts being in my mind, and seeing the wounded warriors that was there that put a thought in my mind as a songwriter and challenged me as a songwriter that if, I know the Bible says that there's a great gulf fix between man and God, which we can't cross. And uh, so I know it's not possible to be able to talk to our loved ones who passed on before us. But if our loved ones could say something to us, what would they say? And I was thinking of this from a veteran's perspective. Someone who lost their life but still had their family here. If they could say something, what would they say? And that's how this song was born. It's a song called The Brave. I see it in your eyes The pain that you hold inside I'm glad you came Don't turn away It's good to see you again I'm sorry that it had to end This way My all I gave Days and nights 
nights they may be long. To say goodbye's the saddest song. Well, here you are in this field of stone. God and the others who gave For the land of the free Where all glory waves The soul stands strong You're in the home of the brave Thanks for the they are nice I'm glad you bring them every time And our kids, they sure have grown You're doing fine now Here you are in this field of stone Kneeling on the ground you feel all alone You can take your hands from my grave And it's okay for you to walk so stand strong, you're in the home of the brave. So stand strong, you're in the home of the brave. Mm songs left and then it'll be time for me to uh, to move on. Whenever you get real famous someone hands you a guitar that's already tuned the way you need it so I apologize. I'm not all that famous yet I don't think. But anyway I seen this young gentleman walk in here just a few minutes ago. He actually co-wrote this song with me and uh, we actually wrote it as a country song and then uh, the more we listened to it, and even while we were in the studio, I said, you know what, I think the song would actually make more of a gospel song than what it would a country song. So we ended up putting two versions on the album anyway. But uh, this, this is a song right here. And again, like I say, I have had many ups and downs in my walk with Christ. And I've seen a lot of things in the 48 years that I've been alive. But one of the things I'll never forget is whenever I realized that Christ could be my Savior. And uh, this is a song called Thanks for Saving Me. Mr. Rodney Durst, actually, he wrote the second verse of this thing in like 30 seconds. He had it down, and uh, it's pretty cool. He's a great songwriter, too. And uh, 
I'd like to be able to share it with you. It's called Till I Found You. I did the wrong thing. These eyes have seen a heartbreak and put back together again. A lost soul find forgiveness after laying down its sin. Promises that were broken and a man's dreams come true that I never seen nothing, nothing like you, Jesus. You help this blind man see, made my foolish heart be me. The soul on the verge of despair could walk. And I thought I seen everything Then I found you The things I thought important They don't matter anymore And the things I knew for certain And now I'm not so sure The sin that had me blinded But now I realize What I was missing something today. Uh, I'm not going to sit down and sing anymore. It's too late in the show to already change it, but um, I feel like a stuffed pig <laughs> sitting down <laughs> trying to sing. But uh, but anyway, I'm going to sing uh, this song here for you. Uh, man, i got to do a banjo tune sitting there. I'll probably do two, but uh, I'll leave you with this one right here. What are you saying? Three? Uh, yeah. Two, three? Three? You got one? Country Roads. You can't leave without that. Oh, okay. One of them. There's, yeah, three, three songs, Mike says. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, through my songwriting journey, and um, I wish I had more time to be able to go in detail and share that with you. And actually, we'll be doing that uh, later on. When is that date, Kate? September what? The 17th. And where is that again? Yeah, Maple Grove Church. So um, I'll be able to give a more of an in-depth about what it, my life has been like in uh, country music and different things like that. So I'll be able to share that with you and sort of kind of my story behind the scenes and what happened and how songs were born and how they were created and uh, so very very excited about being able to do that and uh, thank you guys for allowing me to be able to share some of my story with you other day and some of my songs so uh, it's very very cool to be able to do that but as a very very young man the very first song that I ever wrote and I'll save it to last uh, a song called Who Holds Tomorrow Digging Jin sang down West Virginia on my uncle's farm came off to a little Baptist church where I asked Christ to come into my heart a few months prior to that. And I walked into the church, and in our church was a great big Bible. 
And in that Bible was a bookmarker. And that bookmarker said, I may not know what tomorrow holds, but I know who holds tomorrow. And as a 12-year-old young man, that saying absolutely gripped me with everything it had. I was learning how to play the guitar at that time, and uh, I kind of went home and picked it up, and the words that came out were something like this. I didn't know that at 12 years old, this song would end up being the motto of my life. But these are words that the good Lord gave me in a little Baptist church about 150 miles from here, and I'd like to be able to share it with you. setting down thing anymore. Uh, let me grab this banjo. I gotta do a banjo song for you, alright? songs I learned how to play. I used to play with two fingers and then I broke my arm whenever I was 16 doing an Evil Knievel stunt out behind our house off of a real steep hill and built a humongous ramp off of a little tiny creek. I jumped about 18 feet in the air, flew across the holler, across our garden spot and I hit a stump sticking out of the ground on the other side. And when I stood up my thumb was wrung off and it was clear over here. It flopped completely over. So one of the old men told me, he said, Steve, if you want to learn how to play the banjo, right you got to throw that third finger in there. He said, if you're ever going to make it anywhere, that's what you're going to have to do. So I sit and twist my arm in that cast, and my wrist is a whole lot wider than what it should be where I was twisting it in that cast. So I would be able to do these rolls and be able to play this banjo right. So uh, 
One of the songs that I learned to play whenever I picked the banjo up inside of our church, Zion Hill Baptist Church. I always love playing this and be able to share it with you. I cannot sing and play the banjo at the same time. Unfortunately, there's too many things happening, but I'm going to pick for you. I'll fly away. song for you and I'm going to leave, all right? So a lot of people ask me a lot of times, and I was actually telling Mike about this earlier, this hat that I have on. A lot of people question me and say, why in the world do you have that hat on, that West Virginia hat? Well, you know what, if, if I were allowed, I'd wear it in church on Sunday mornings too. It's one of the reasons I enjoy doing cowboy church is because you can wear a hat in cowboy church. And they say that to you. So I do all the cowboy church I can. But one of the reasons that I like this hat, and I've caught a lot of ridicule about, uh, you know, having a band for several years and doing what we've done for a long time. People always ask me, they're like, why do you have on a West Virginia hat? I just don't get it. I don't understand. It's not about football, it's not about basketball or baseball or volleyball or soccer or whatever it is that they have. It's not about that at all. I was always taught as a kid, always be proud of where you're from. However, when I was 18, that's the first place I wanted to get out of was that farm and all that brush cutting and that milking the cows and feeding the dogs and slopping the hogs and butchering and building the fence, putting up the hay and the list goes on and on and on. But anyway, one thing my dad always told me, he said, always be proud of where you're from. And Katie and I were down at my parents' house. It had been a couple years ago. My dad sat there with tears in his eyes, and he said, you know what? He said, I might have worked Steve just a little bit too hard on that farm because now he doesn't want to do anything when it comes to the farm. And he's exactly right. I don't. The only way I like a beef that's on my plate, and I'm getting ready to eat it. Right, so, but anyway, all that hard work on that farm made me into the man that I am today. It taught me a lot of the things that I know today, a lot of the things that get me by in life are things that I learned on that farm. I was mad then that I had to do it, but I'm glad now that I do do it. And one of the reasons that I wear this West Virginia hat is because I'm proud to be from the middle of nowhere, West Virginia. I'm proud of what God has made out of me. And uh, no matter where you're from, I always be proud of that. And um, so anyway, I guess this is West Virginia's motto song, and it's sort of my motto song too. So if y'all know it, please sing it along with me. It's an old country song that goes something like this. Almost heaven, West Virginia, Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. Life is old there, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, blowing like a breeze. Country roads, and take me home. Sure. 
feeling that I should have been home yesterday. Yesterday, country roads and take me home to the place that I belong. West Virginia, a mountain on the take me home. Country roads and take me home. I love my country roads mm -hmm. <laughs> Thanks y'all, I appreciate it Mike, it's all you, buddy all right. Can you believe, can you believe or, am, I, am I on? Okay, but you may not want to hear this can you believe during that song, because I'm, I'm from West Virginia, and my wife interrupted me during that song, Steve. I, she wanted me to make some kind of an announcement, and I didn't have, I don't have a clue what she was saying, because she was not going to interrupt that song, you know? So, uh... You drive yourself here, right? Do what? Uh, well, we'll see how things work out. I may be asking for a ride home tonight, okay? Can you give me a ride home, Steve? Uh, yeah, we'll come back with you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. A uh, couple things. Um, first of all, I don't know a whole lot about social media, and I don't know a whole lot about a lot of things, but uh, Steve's music, uh, I saw the banner over here. Uh, I'm assuming that banner is up to date. Okay, you can download some free music if you know how to use a smartphone. And if you don't know how to use a smartphone, you can't do that. But uh, you have a, there's a website on there also. And Steve, Steve sings a lot of places. He's, he's all over the place singing. So you, know, you, know, you wouldn't be too surprised to catch him just about anywhere. And we really appreciate it. Uh, we really appreciate it, Steve. And yes, and you'll be hearing Steve a whole lot more in churches. Uh, that announcement's going to be coming out directly um, from him, and uh, so you want to be listening in for that. Uh, I know she said something about the flowers, and I'm not sure exactly what it is. Huh? There's a silent auction for, uh, for the flowers back there at the table. I really don't know how a silent auction works. <laughs> See, these flowers, okay, first of all, let's back up. These flowers were donated to us by Pleasant Valley Greenhouse, which is a cl uh, client of Roy's. Uh, they were donated by Pleasant Valley Greenhouse. And so there's a silent auction going on. I think that's what I was supposed to tell you. You write down on a piece of paper how much you want to give for the for, for one of these? I guess it's going to go to the, all four. Pardon? Oh, there's four different boxes. You really don't know nothing about a sign box. <laughs> no, I don't. I, uh, I, I, but that's how I got my wife. She's inside, I think. I hope. I hope. Uh, so, but thank you, Steve. We really, really appreciate it. He's going to hang around here for a little bit. Uh, he's going to go get himself something to eat. Um, being the preacher that I am, I probably should have started the uh, day's festivities off uh, asking God's blessing upon the day, but I didn't. So I think probably now is a good time as any to do that. And I think there's other preachers out here that's probably scratching their head on that too. But, uh, uh, but let's come before the Lord in prayer and ask his blessings uh, for the remainder of the time that we have together, okay? Our Heavenly Father, we come before your presence this afternoon. We thank you, Lord God, for your blessings and for watching over us. We thank you for keeping us in your care and for being with us and walking with us and leading and guiding and directing us, Lord God. We, we thank you for being here with us today. We, uh, we, we thank you for the beautiful day, the sunlight, and, and the weather, how it's cooperating with us. We thank you for all those who have volunteered and put a tremendous amount of uh, work in and effort in in, uh, in making preparations for today and, and getting everything uh, ready. We ask that you bless them. We ask, that Lord, that you bless the food that people will be partaking of, uh, to be strengthening and nourishing for them. 
We pray your blessings, Lord God, upon each person who uh, takes a step upon this stage to uh, to bring a message to us, Lord God, that uh, that, that you just uh, be with them and speak through them and keep them all in your care, Father. We pray and ask that uh, those ministries that they all have, that you bless the, uh, their ministry and multiply their ministry. And, and we pray and ask that you guide them in the course and the direction you want them to go into, Father God. We know that you open doors and you close doors. And, and we just pray and ask that, the, uh, that those who are bringing the message up from the stage, Lord God, that... Uh, that you'll be clear in the directions you want them to go. But speak through them to us this day, Father God, and bless them. Bless them. We ask this all in the name of Jesus. Amen. You can be on uh, video. Uh, when, we, when we started off, we were talking about Operation Christmas Child and what it is. And I'll, I'll just use one of my props. Okay. But uh, Carolyn's been working with uh, OCC as a volunteer for nine years. Nine years. And I can tell you a little bit about it. My wife can tell you a whole lot more than I can, and Carolyn can tell you way more than probably her and I both can. So with that, I'm just going to turn it over to her for a few minutes. Don't walk away from my crop. I need that later. Okay. I was going to say, Mike, you're a lot taller than me. Um, first of all, I want to thank this church and the Friendsville area because... We have a lot of big churches that don't do a tenth of what this little church has done in the past few years. They've been remarkable. And um, last year we sent 23,000 boxes from our area to over 100 countries. So we're really proud of that. And 2,000 went to countries that do not know anything about religion their Muslim religions or atheists, so we were tickled that we could be part of that ministry. Um, I'm not a speaker. I'm a good talker. I can talk for hours. So. <laughs> Does anyone have a question about Operation Christmas Child? Probably everyone knows it's part of Samaritan Purse, and um, that's what we do. We send shoe boxes to hurting children in other countries. We put um, school supplies and hygiene. We hear stories of how, uh, well, a little girl just told us not too long ago, she grew up in an orphanage, and uh, there were 10 girls in the room, and they had one toothbrush. They got in a line, and they shared the toothbrush as it went down. So every little thing like a toothbrush, or they'll take one pencil and cut it in three pieces so the three children can go to school. And we take so much for granted in the United States. You just can't imagine the difference in what the children, and they are so grateful. I mean, they are so excited to get a toothbrush. Uh, one little boy told us that um, when he opened his box, there were nine children in his family. They shared one toothbrush. and. When he opened his box, it had 10 toothbrushes in it. So we tell people, when you're packing your box, you might think, well, maybe I should put an extra bar of soap in or an extra bracelet. Or And some of the teenagers, like the teenage boys, you can put a bracelet or a necklace in and they have some, a gift to give to their mother or their sister. Well... Any more questions? <laughs> I'm just talking and no one's asking me anything. We just listen. Well, I just want to thank everyone that's here and helping with their dinner because it's a wonderful ministry that they do and they have done a wonderful job at this church and we really appreciate it. Thank you later on. Okay, Nikki, are you ready? Uh, ready, Brian? Huh? A what? <laughs> All right, they need a sound check, whatever that is. Check, check. So I'm going to let her check her sound. But at this time, uh, we're going, I want to introduce everyone to Nikki Skidmore. Nikki's a member of Asher Glade Church, and uh, we're glad to have her as a part of our church where Steve sings mostly Southern gospel. Uh, Nikki sings, are you singing contemporary? 
Nikki's going to sing contemporary. So uh, you know, just a little change of pace on the music uh, uh, genre. But uh, Nikki, uh, give make a warm uh, welcome for Nikki Skidmore. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So last year when I played this, I played the piano and sang by myself. This year, I uh, kind of talked my husband into playing with me. He's a very good guitarist, but it's very hard to get him to play anymore, especially with our new one-year-old running around all the time. You'll have to teach him to play. She wants to play. She does pick up his guitar and strum at it and laugh at it. So one day, does it sound okay, Andy? The guitar. I'm not real good at the talking either, I just typically sing and go, so that's what we're going to do, sing and go. This first one is by Jamie Grace, it's called Hold Me. I love, I love, I love, I love the way you hold me. I love, I love, I love, I love the way you hold me. I love, I love, I love, I love the way you hold me. I love, I love, I love, I love the way you, the way you. I've had a long day, I just wanna relax. Don't have time for my friends, no time to shit chat. Problems at my job, wondering what to do. I know I should be working, but I'm thinking of you. When, just when I feel this crazy world is gonna bring me down That's when your smile comes around Oh, I love the way you hold me by my side You'll always be here, take each and every day Make it special in some way I love the way you hold me in your arms I'll always be here, take each and every day Make it special in some way I love you more than the words in my brain can express I can't imagine even loving you less
singing back to me. song of the redeemed rising from the African plains it's the song of the forgiven drowning out the Amazon rain the song of Asian believers filled with God's holy fire it's every tribe, every tongue, every nation, a love song born of a grateful choir. It's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. It's all God's children singing. From the towers of cathedrals to the faithful gathered underground. Of all the songs sung from the dawn of creation, some were meant to persist. Of all the bells rung from a thousand steeples, none rings truer than this. So God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns. Cause all the powers of darkness can't drown out a single word. When all God's children sing out glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns. With all God's children sing Show. 
This one we learned just for you, Pastor Mike. It was a sermon that he preached on uh, back in winter, I think. It's been a while, last fall or something, almost a year ago. This song is called Priceless.
requested this and I played it last year for him. So I'm playing it this year without his request. <laughs> This is made famous by originally a country singer. I do know a little bit about this song. Um, if anybody's familiar with Lady Antebellum, yeah. the lead singer Hilary Scott kind of did a spin off in a Christian album, so I'm going to cover one of her songs. It's her most popular one on the radio. <coughs> Chicken and Biscuit Gospel Program, and uh, uh, is this your second or third year with us? Second year. Second year, okay. So uh, the Durst Brothers have been with us now for two years. We're excited and ha to have them back with us this evening. Glad that their schedule worked out to be able to come. And, and what, what do we call this? this our wash tub means something. Wash tub bait. 
That's pretty sad when you have to mic up a wash tub. You know? You got her in there? Oh, I heard it. Okay. Okay, so anyway, without any further ado, I'd like to introduce everyone and make them welcome to Durst Brothers. Oh, it's good to be here. Brother, would you tell the folks what the King James Version says? King James Version says, barely, barely. New International says, truly, truly. And down south they say, sure enough. Sure enough, we're gonna have a sure enough good time when we make it home. We're gonna have a sure enough good time when we see the throne. Put the battles on and the war is hot. We gotta do our part. We're gonna have a sure enough good time when we make it home. Well, Jesus never said. This life would be swell. You know we're in a battle with the forces of hell. We may get pushed around. It might feel a little pain, but it's worth it all. Just to know with Jesus we're gonna reign. We're gonna have a sure enough good time when we make it home. We're gonna have a sure enough good time when we see the throne. We're gonna have a sure enough good time when we make it home. Well, I heard some preacher talking just the other day. He said the Lord was about to send a big Cadillac my way. Well, I don't want to argue, fuss, or pick a bone. But what good is a Cadillac in the middle of a combat zone?
Pastor Mike said we are the Durst brothers, and uh, this is my brother here, Dennis, and we are definitely brothers. <laughs> well, Eddie here, is, uh, he's not quite there yet. He's been with me about four or five years, maybe. But he got to lose a little more hair before he's an official brother. Okay? Now, he's a brother in Christ, but he's not a Durst brother until he gets rid of some of that hair there. We can... Uh... Oh, you could, but he don't want that. He said he wants to be an associate member as long as possible. <laughs> now, like I said, we got some different kind of instruments here, and uh, it's trouble when we, when we try to get a concert together. We got to always talk with uh, Eddie's wife to make sure that he can use the worst tub that night. <laughs> because, you know, you know, she has to clean the clothes and stuff, and if it's a laundry day, we, we just can't have a concert. <laughs> but uh, since it's uh, a day that she didn't need to use it, she said we could use it tonight, so we're doing that. And over here, my brother's going to be playing here this next song. It's going to use his, his K-John. That's French for box drum, okay? And that's the box drum. It's a French word there. And it's hard for me to say because I went to elementary school at Swanton, two-room schoolhouse, and we didn't have foreign language then. But what they did do to compensate, they taught us accents. So I learned a French accent. I can talk a little French accent for you. Oui, c'est mes hôtels de Jean, de Bas Jean. Okay? A little French for you. I can also talk some German for you from Swan. I want to tell you something about this situation. I want to tell you this, okay? So they did teach us accents in case we were somewhere and they, you know, we wanted to impress somebody or something. But they taught us some accents. But anyhow, we're going to do a little song here. A little song of a picture of my brother on the box, box drum brace here. And also, wait a second. The Lord works things out. I'm up here with a broken pick. And I just saw one laying on the ground. Oh. All right. Okay. All right. This song here, and I went to... Like most of the songs we do as Durst Brothers are songs that I write. The Lord gave me the ability to write songs, and most of the ones we do are songs that I write. And I went to Nashville, and I went down there to songwriter school with some pro writers, and I was there for, and they went through the training program and stuff like that. And at the end of the program, they said to me, they said, as a lyricist, he said, you're a genius. And I was thinking, all right, I'm a genius. He said, as music, though, it's predictable. Huh. So kind of like praise and then put down. When I came back home, though, what I did was I took a song that was written by Hank Williams and I turned it into a gospel song. And we'd love to play it for you. And it did real well for us on the chart back when we used to put stuff out. It's called Elijah. Listen close to the words. Elijah was a mighty man of God, so the Bible says.
for life and I hope it's your philosophy as well. well as we look on the news and see what's going on and you know what this is not my home I tell you. I'm looking forward to like brother Abraham and they're looking forward to that city whose builder and maker is God listen to those words <coughs> this old life is tempting this old life ain't long you work so hard to make it in a moment it's all gone I'm crazy, I might be a little odd, but I'm looking for that city whose builder is God. songs together okay we're gonna do some songs here we might go into a praise song or two we're gonna do some songs I didn't write these but uh, you guys have been saying for a while and I'd love to share these songs see if you recognize these and I want you to give me a favor if you remember these songs from Sunday school do the hand motions as well okay All right. <laughs> this little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Shine, let it shine, shine, shine. 
Durst Brothers is uh, uh, Colossians chapter 316. It says, singing and making melody and singing and joys, psalms and hymns and spiritual songs unto the Lord. And we have spiritual songs and we have uh, hymns and those kind of things. And this is one of those that was written for a piano and to play on the guitar, I needed a chorus. So I wrote a little chorus for it. It's not my song, but I wrote a little chorus for it so I can play on the guitar. And I think it turned into a pretty song, so you'll recognize it. Okay. Lovely 
expecting to hear some hidden in the windows and hidden lyrics about how much I love Jesus, you came to the wrong place. Because I'm going to say it loud, I'm going to say it strong, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's the power of God and salvation, and it's time that we either love Him to stand up and share that. Now we're going to play a little song here that I wrote especially for this cage on here. And, uh, but it tells you just that. It tells you just that. Because in the name of Jesus, the scripture tells us, every knee shall bow. Now, I don't know, I'm, I'm sure they know it by now, but Mohammed will bow, Buddha will bow, Hare Krishna will bow, everyone will bow to the name of Jesus. Amen. That's what the scripture says. If you don't like it, you think I'm being politically incorrect, well, that's what the Bible says, and that's what I stand for. Amen? Amen. This is Christ's word. Slow things down. This is here. Okay, yeah, take three minutes. Okay. Give my brother a break there. Usually this time we're at a nursing home or something doing, and I'll have him to sing a song or something after he's been worked out. I tell you, that's, that's kind of mean for being a brother, ain't it? <laughs> but that's because I was a little brother, and then when I was little, and then he's older than me, then he. And I had to, this is payback. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, he was a good brother. He was a good brother. All right, here. Let's see here. This here is probably the most powerful song the Lord ever gave me. And we like to always conclude in our concerts. It's a slow song. Listen close to the words because this song here is what it's all about. It's called Lunatic, Liar, or Lord. And in this song here, it asks the question, who is Jesus? And that's the, the, the thing that everyone must answer. Who is Jesus? And he could even be. I've heard some folks say he was a good man. Couldn't have been. Some say, you know, that he was a good prophet. Couldn't have been. Because what he said... He either had to be a lunatic, a liar, or in fact, Lord. Listen to the words. Throughout the ages, men have come and gone. Jesus. 
Jesus the carpenter stands all alone. Who was this Jesus? Let's take a look and see. Better make sure, cause it'll mean eternity. Some say he was a good man, but that could never By chance, I don't know for sure. Usually we don't, but do we have any mothers in the audience tonight? <laughs> oh, we do have some. All right. How about grandmothers? Got some grandmothers? Amen. How about, how about great grandmothers? All right. How about, how about great great grandmothers? All right. You did that. Sometimes we ask this question at the nursing home. There'll be some guy in the back who'll raise his hand. Like, yeah. Don't pay attention. Right, like that. They're like that. Okay. All right. Well, here we all like to say we're Durst brothers here and. My mom passed away, the, the, our mom passed away at a very early age, the age of 62. And she was struggling with diabetes for such a long time. And uh, we tried to, everything we knew how to get her to uh, take the disease serious. And it took her life at 62. But it was Mother's Day and um, I wanted to do something special for her. So I wrote this song and uh, I sang it to her then for Mother's Day and then I also sang it at her funeral. And I sing it a lot of... Uh, Funerals. It's been sung at funerals and it's been, been recorded and people have told me they played at their mother's funeral. But it's a tribute to the mothers, the grandmothers and great grandmothers. It's a true song. It's called Mama Song. Listen to the words. <coughs> I was afraid I wouldn't see you 
love you A Christian mother is a blessing from the Lord If you're just a little tight boy, 40 years old second wind and uh, but this one here is a song that uh, the Bible tells us you know sometimes when you pray you feel like your prayers don't get above the ceiling sometimes when you pray you feel that God is so far away and he's not listening the Bible tells us it's times like that when the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us and prays to God in words and moans and groans and words that we can't say that's what this song's about listen close to words there are times when my prayers don't seem to make it through Like a child lost and lonely, oh so far away from you Fear and trembling, I don't know what to say That is when you search my heart the Father you gently pray. Holy Spirit, you are there in my hour of despair. When the Lord seems so far Faith been broken and shattered by lies, trials, and pain. When words cannot be spoken, for I'm much too weak to pray. That is when you reach the Father with words I cannot say. Holy Spirit.
kind of little song. <clears throat> we call it our Book of Acts song. You know, Book of Acts kind of just doesn't end. It just kind of just stops. It doesn't have an ending to it. And I believe that's because we are the children of God and we are writing the Book of Acts. Our lives as we go on are the acts of the Christians. And someday when we get to heaven, we'll see what the effect that we made on that. So that's why I believe the Book of Acts never ended. And this is our Book of Acts song. It's called Go and Tell Someone, okay? Number one, I look forward to the first day of school. <laughs> now, you're, you're, you're saying, yeah, get rid of the kids. No, no. See, my, my day job is I'm a school principal. So my worst day of school is the last day of school. I hate when I see the kids go because I'm not going to get to see them for about 10, 12 weeks, whatever the case is. And so I hate that last day of school because they're gone. But, but, I, but I love that first day of school when the kids are all coming back. Uh, and then, and then my, one, of my, one of my other favorite days of the year is this day today, where we can all gather together for some, uh, some uh, chicken and biscuits and some good old uh, gospel singing. And I appreciate uh, everyone who takes part uh, in, in what happens here. It's, it's just greatly, greatly appreciated. Um, and I thank you guys for coming out. And again, this whole thing tonight is to support Operation Christmas Child and, and to try to raise funds so that we can send shoeboxes around the world to uh, kids who, who've never received a gift in their life. And we talked about this little toothbrush, and none of us here, 
Let me see a smile from you guys all up here. They all got your let me see, Rod. They all got their teeth. They all got their teeth. But how would you like to start? You'd like to be the first one. He would like to be the first one to share this toothbrush with each other. All the way down. Who wants to go second? Roger, you want to go, go second? You know, we were talking about that a little bit ago that kids in these orphanages, there's one toothbrush for every 10 kids. One toothbrush for every 10 kids. Maybe a bar of soap, maybe a washcloth that has to be shared with all the kids. And, 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 the, and, and the things that these kids don't have that the shoebox provides. And so we just ask you to take the time to, to pack a shoebox. Pack a shoebox. If you're not familiar, Carolyn's sitting back over here. She, she, raise your hand, Carolyn. She, she talked a little bit. And Dottie's sitting there. And, and, and they'll show you and tell you how to pack a shoebox. If you don't have a place to drop it off, just drop it off here at our church. We'll make sure it gets taken care of and sent. Uh, it costs about $9 to send a shoebox to a foreign country. You can't, I think, it's, I think a letter, Rodney, you're my postmaster. Where are you at? Was post, ex, retired postmaster. Uh, probably cost nine dollars to send a letter to a foreign country, you know. And we can send a shoebox full of toys and everything to a foreign country to a child who doesn't have. But most important, within that shoebox is the Word of God. Every single shoebox is packed with the gospel message of Jesus Christ, with the attempt of leading that child to the saving knowledge of Jesus. That's the primary purpose. That's the overall big picture of what the shoe boxes do. So we just ask you, please support that effort. Uh, make a shoe box. Make donations. You, know, you can get online with Operation Christmas Child, uh, Samaritan's Purse. You can make online donations. We have a donation box back in the back of that table. If you want to drop in a five, a ten, a twenty, a hundred, you know, if you only have one $100 bill and you want to write a check for $1,000, you know what, that seems far-fetched, but, you know, that happens. You may not have $1,000 to give, but, you know, your dollar helps. And if you can just give it in that box yeah. back there, it goes a long ways. But you put the box downstairs for your meal, it all goes to the Operation Christmas Child. So we thank you guys for coming out. We thank you guys for coming out and donating your time. It's greatly, greatly appreciated. So as the Durst brothers make their way off the stage, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Let's have a round of applause for them. Oh, yes. I'll spit in Rodney's microphone. Uh, hey, Brian, turn this one off for a second. Um, Okay, here we go. Yeah, now Rodney changed out with the microphone. He says he spits when he sings. Hey, buddy. How you doing? You want to come up here? Huh? You can come up here and help me introduce Second Wind. You want to do that? Come on up here with Pat. You can do that. This is my little buddy. He loves to sing in church. Don't you? It's a way to start him. Run. Yeah. How you doing? You doing good? Well, tell me your name. Tell me your name. Well, tell me your name. Tell me your name. This is Clinton. This is Clinton Wayne Frotz, right? And you are six years old. Three years old. Okay, my buddy. My buddy, right? You best buddies? Yeah. You want to sing a song? No? Okay. You want to sing a song? You want to sing happy birthday? God bless you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put you, okay. You wait right here with me, okay? Okay. Oh, okay, I've got a few more minutes. Um, anybody have any jokes? I don't. You know any jokes? 
just a story about the uh, toothbrush. I talked to somebody <coughs> who was uh, a recipient of the tooth toothbrush when they were a child, and they got this uh, tube of stuff uh, it was toothpaste, but they thought they had never seen toothpaste before. Yeah. They would always just uh, rub some regular soap or something like that on their toothbrush and brush their teeth with. And they thought it was candy. They, but they, that they thought it was some of the best candy they ever had in their oh, life. Wow. <laughs> wow. They ate it as candy. <laughs> Here's some more recruits. That's a <laughs> yeah, but it's welcome healthy. That's it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Kids coming up here on the stage? Yeah. All right. Maybe we get, you think we get all three of these kids to sing a song? You guys want to sing a song? What song? You want to sing a song? Jesus loves me? You guys, is that what you want to sing? You guys all come up here. Oh, come up here. Rob, you hold the microphone. Okay. You guys want to sing Jesus Loves Me really loud. Ready? Go. Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Okay, I'll introduce you guys and then get off the stage, okay? All right. 
The unfortunate part is things start winding down. And uh, we are winding down for tonight, but we're so glad and so happy to have with us and that they were able to come out tonight to be with us. A uh, group that's been with us now for a couple of years. I may introduce everyone to Second Wind. A round of Long ago, long, long ago, I suffered. Oh, yes, 
Yes, the old camp was settled long ago And my records clear today For you washed my sins away When the old camp was settled long ago sing one of them next. <laughs> <laughs> which, which one do we know? Tiny Dog. Tiny what key? Yeah. So I don't think we've ever done this one out before, but we're going to give it a shot. Anybody, anybody here ever live near a railroad track? You live, live near the railroad? Yeah, this, this one's called Raised by the Railroad Line. I 
passenger train is a part of the soul and the heart and the mind. Tractors on the flat car road becomes a part of the soul and the heart and the mind of a boy who's by the railroad line and a big round penny that you lay on the rails and the wheels mash flat. The pictures of the ladies and the men and the engineer hat and the brakeman waves. It's a part of the past, never quite turned loose. It's a part of the soul, and the heart and the mind of a boy who's free by the railroad line. surprises us. He just calls out songs and we cross our fingers and hope we know them or can remember them or have heard them before. <laughs> where they act, actually, as you were saying, we're second wind. Uh, last year this time, uh, we had another member with us up here, Olin Beitzel. And um, Olin, Olin and I and Veronica, we played together for, gosh, on and off for 18 years. So a couple months ago, we lost Olin. He went to the other side of Jordan, and um, we miss him, and it's, uh, it's a little different playing without him, so I just wanted to remember him while we were standing up here. Yeah, you can sing along. Any of these songs that you know, feel free to sing along.
singing on that last one. Uh, sit down, sit down if you're going to help us sing the next one. 
Great, 100% participation. <laughs> uh oh, she was standing. <laughs> Sleeve, don't we? Uh, oh, I don't think we can come up with okay. like maybe the golden slipper. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. All right. Let's do like Grandpa did when he got his toenail cut in the sheets. That's a letter rip. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
saw Esau sitting on a seesaw. I saw Esau with my girl. I saw Esau sitting on a seesaw, giving her a merry world. When I saw Esau, he saw me. I saw red and got so sore, so I got a saw and I saw Esau up that old seesaw. I saw it, honey. Slippers and I saw Esau. Uh, have any of you ever heard of that song? I saw Esau. <laughs> Yeah, this, this, how many, we still have some kids around here. This song is for the kids to just enjoy, and this song is for the adults to test their memory. So at the end of this song, there's going to be a quiz, right? Uh, you can take notes if you want. You can even use your smartphones if you like. But we'll see, we'll see, all right? Fun for the kids and memory game for the adults. There's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole in the bottom of the sea. There's an auto log in the hole in the bottom of the sea. There's an auto log in the hole in the bottom of the sea. There's a hole, there's a hole, there's a hole in the bottom of the sea.
sneak away in the afternoon, take a little walk, and pretty soon you find them at the full auction bar. He's standing, listen carefully, and he was standing again. How the auctioneer could talk so rapidly. He's a new my it's do or die. I've got to learn that auction craft to make my mark in an auctioneer. Who's gonna bid 25? Make it 25. Who's gonna bid it? 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 Who's g
See, how do you know when the stage is level? The tobacco is dripping out of both sides of the banjo player. <laughs> All right, well, that's the best I could do. <laughs> All right. Anyone have a joke you'd like to share? If you have a joke you'd like to share, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. At least one person was listening to me. <laughs> yeah, this one's just kind of a little uh, off the wall bluegrass song. It's probably about as bluegrassy as we get. <laughs> 